We continue our journey in this Lenten season on this Wednesday for our third Lent service. Our theme is from the prophet Zechariah, Your Kingdom Comes. And we find some great uh, joy and excitement in today's reading as we see the impact of Jesus our Savior, especially as he went to the cross that offers hope, peace, and truth to the world. I'd like to just highlight for you that there are uh, two more Wednesday services. Uh, then for our worship time, beginning on Sunday, March 21st, we will have outdoor in-person worship with communion. And then it, that will continue our 9.30 service on March 28th, Palm Sunday. And then for Easter, we are going, we've, we're adding a second service, 9.30 and 11, uh, both in person, outdoor, and it's important that you do reserve your spots for those services. For the other two Holy Week services, Monday, Thursday will be a recorded service at noon. And then Good Friday at noon will be an in-person outdoor worship as well. We're very excited to be able to gather together and have an opportunity to join in the worship that God has given to us as he's revealed himself to us, especially for the most significant time of the church here as Christians, the week of Holy Week, Jesus' passion, death, and then resurrection on Easter. Our opening hymn is, Listen, God is Calling. Listen, God is calling through the burning light, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, God is calling through the burning light, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news, that he came to save us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Behold, your King comes to you, righteous and having salvation, speaking peace to the nations, and ruling from sea to sea. To the ends of the earth, God's kingdom comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people. Oh, God. 
Let us pray. Holy One, you are steadfast love and abundant mercy to all who turn to you. Create within us hearts of love and compassion. Place in us spirits that are eager to live with integrity. Give us voice to sing to you with gratitude 
and to proclaim you with courage and conviction. We ask this through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading from Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 to 23. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Many peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will yet come, and the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, Let us go at once to entreat the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. I myself am going. And many people and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord Almighty and to entreat him. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In those days, ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, Let us go with you, because we have heard that God is with you. The Gospel reading from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Dear friends in Christ, we gather around God's word and specifically the prophet Zechariah as we anticipate the coming of God's kingdom and the kingdom of God that comes in our world through Jesus and continues to be with us as we journey through this Lenten season. We find today a refreshing, refreshing gift of God in the prophet Zechariah. 
especially after we have experienced a time of repentance. First, secure your own oxygen mask. Familiar phrase anymore, uh, distinctive to anyone who's flown on an airline. And the directive is if there's an emergency loss of cabin pressure, this emergency, that oxygen masks are going to drop down and that we are to put them on. And then there's even another directive that we need to put them on ourselves first before we might help someone as such as a child who would be in need. First, secure your own mask. Well, we are living in an emergency situation in many ways. We've moved through one year of the pandemic. It, this really marks uh, 12 months right about now. And our whole world has changed. And even as we move through it, but yet are not past it, and even understanding probably even until the end of the year, that we still are in a situation where we have lots of need for this extra oxygen, if you will. There's still a sense of isolation and loneliness and depression. There's still struggles financially and certainly struggles even uh, with uh, health and life. And then that, all of the uncertainty that's still there, maybe more optimism and more hope for, which is a gift of God with the vaccine, but yet it is still seems a long time in coming. So what's God's directive to us? First, put on your own oxygen mask. In this series of Zechariah, Your Kingdom Come, we find that in chapter 8, God is just pouring oxygen into us, saturated by the gospel, and it helps to keep us calm in the midst of chaos or peace in the midst of panic. And then also important is truth in the midst of all the still turbulence of news and information that's out there. So Zechariah chapter 8 drops a whole bunch of oxygen mass on us. Well, when we uh, take a look at uh, some of the, these uh, uh, verses, um, earlier in Zechariah, it talks about that God dwells with his people. I will return to Zion and dwell in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the faithful city, and the mountain of the Lord Almighty will be called the holy mountain. Now, for the people of Zechariah's day who are rebuilding the temple and reestablishing their nation uh, as the people of God after having been in exile in Babylon, this returning of God is really important. So God's not something abstract. He's returning to them. And who's this fulfilled in? Jesus. Jesus coming into the world, uh, the, the flesh dwelling amongst us, and God dwelling in our midst. Uh, then um, this is such a beautiful um, uh, verse, too, from uh, earlier in Zechariah chapter 8. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Once again, men and women of ripe old age will sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each of them with cane in hand because of their age. The city streets will be filled with boys and girls playing there. Now, even as we move through this pandemic, we can anticipate again uh, life may be different, but still life is God intended, being able to be together and be out and about. Um, contrasting these two generations, uh, the, <clears throat> the older folks uh, being able to be out uh, sitting in the streets and with cane and boys and girls playing. Um, just even now as uh, schools are reopening and uh, there's a refreshing in that. So God's providing us with some openness, some change, some direction, moving toward things that are helpful and a blessing for us, and ultimately to live in this peace uh, that God gives to us. Uh, exiles coming home in 7 and 8, I will save my people from the countries of the east and the west. I will bring them back to live in Jerusalem. They will be my people, and I will be faithful and righteous to them as their God. Now, when you think about Zechariah as a prophet, and prophets generally have calls of gloom and doom and repentance, we find that that's happened now, and now after the repentance comes uh, the joy, the return, the salvation that God brings, and certainly as we see Jesus in the center of that as well. The faithfulness and the righteousness of God comes to us in Jesus. We see that creation is renewed the seed will grow well, the vine will yield its fruit, and the ground will produce crops, and the heavens will drop their dew. 
I give all these things as an inheritance to the remnant of this people. <laughs> wow, what great blessings. What infusions of oxygen, and even in the springtime, and we've had some rain that we've needed uh, to anticipate, again, the refreshing renewness of this season. Uh, a gift of God once again in his promise to watch over and take care of us. And then the last thing is the, uh, in terms of this newness and freshness, which we can look forward to, is that the, the fast yield to feast in worship. Well, we've certainly had a long fast of not being able to come together as God's people in person. There's been a few times, a few stretches, uh, but it looks like as we move forward now, we can anticipate uh, that. Uh, for we find um, uh, that um, Zechariah writes, this is what the Lord Almighty says, the fast of the fourth, fifth, seventh, and ten months will become joyful and glad occasions and happy festivals for Judah. Therefore, love, truth, and peace. Well, good news, optimism, opportunities before us, all of this restoration, refreshment. Just think again of the oxygen, the gospel-saturated oxygen that comes to us through God's word in Jesus. It's God's presence, his protection, his salvation, his renewal, and ultimately celebration. And we've been blessed with uh, the resources at, for, at Holy Cross even to be able to have our, our worship in a wonderful setting, uh, outdoor, in person, uh, gathering together, and anticipating, unlike a year ago, that our great joy will come in celebration as we gather together on Easter to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Well, when we take a look at the heart, though, of of Zechariah's message here, we find that what's most important then about this infusion of God's oxygen, of his salvation, of his presence in, in Jesus our Savior, uh, is what God's will is and how it is to be accomplished. Uh, let's take a look at the, the verses that were the actual uh, Old Testament reading today. Uh, when we uh, read the intent of God, the purpose of this. This is what the Lord Almighty says, verse 20. Many peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will yet come. And the inhabitants of one city will go to another and say, let us go at once to entreat the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. I myself am going. Many peoples and powerful nations will come to Jerusalem to seek the Lord Almighty and to entreat him. This is what the Lord Almighty says in those days. Ten people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Well, when you think about that, uh, how important it is then that we do secure our own oxygen mask first, that we are refreshed and renewed in our Savior Jesus so that we then can join Jesus on his mission and make the connections that God would desire and right here in Zechariah, we see even those hints that are so bold in Revelation of all the language and nations and people that are going to gather around Jesus. For Jesus truly is impartial. The gospel is truly universal. It is offered to all. And how God brings that to other people is through people. It's people to people. And it is so important that we are called then and refreshed and renewed to live it out with a sense of, of hope and optimism and enthusiasm so that indeed all the languages and nations of the world will know Jesus. And so many of them have been brought into our own circles and our neighborhoods. And as we have opportunity to have our world open up, how much more important that we join Jesus on his mission. I think the most important thing for us to keep in mind is that when God's people live as God's people, others will notice, will be drawn to Jesus, ask for Jesus, want Jesus. That's pretty much what Zechariah is saying, uh, that uh, those that are worshiping the Lord and being blessed and notice the Lord Almighty, he emphasizes that, this one God over all, that other people will be attracted and drawn to him. And then specifically when he says, in those days, 10 people from all languages and nations will take firm hold of one Jew by the hem of his robe and say, 
let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Well, on one level, we know Zechariah as a prophet highlights the aspects of Jesus as the Messiah or the Messiah to come then as Jesus comes is that God is with us. That's the, the message of John. Uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God is with us in a very special and, and wonderful way. And it is even holding on to Jesus uh, who first came to the nation of Israel, first as a Jew to the Jews, and then impartially and universally to all people, we find that Jesus is the one then that is attracting and what we want people to hang on to and gives us a chance then as we have been refreshed with this breath and breath in the Bible is the spirit of God to then be able to share that oxygen, that breath, that spirit of God uh, with other people. Once again, this is a way to understand it because then Zechariah draws out how it is we are to also live. When God's people live as God's people, when God's people live as God's people, then others will notice and be drawn to Jesus, ask for Jesus, want Jesus. Well, that's sometimes a rather tall order, but it's very possible and very doable. For we see in those passages, it says, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Right at the end of that verse, let us go with you because we have heard that God is with you. The source, the one that brings forgiveness and life and forgiveness and salvation and purpose and meaning to life as well, takes our fasts and makes them into celebrations. Once again, a fasting from being able to worship in person to being able to worship in person and what that means, but also to invite others along. Uh, there's a great sense that those who are connected to the church have come by a personal invitation, by a person that was willing to say, why don't you come along, come and see. I'd like to have you meet my Savior Jesus. So we find then that it's important for us uh, to know that how we live is so important. And again, it's not about perfection. We want to be authentic, genuine, artificial people. In fact, it might help us to take a bit of that mask off uh, that we have. It's important to have, you know, privacy. It's important to, uh, uh, to be able to be ourselves, though, as well with other people. That they see a genuineness, even the realities of the struggles we may have, even during this pandemic time. But then the hope that we have because of Jesus, that others would seek that out as well. So we want to keep in mind that when God's people, us, live as God's people, then others are going to notice. And we've drawn to Jesus, asked for Jesus, want Jesus. In joining Jesus on his mission, this is wherever we find ourselves, certainly in our neighborhood or walks around the neighborhood or connecting to the neighbors, or even as we interact in the marketplace, certainly in the workplace, and some of that for a time will still be on Zoom, and interact with family and friends, being earnest in prayer and to live a humble life, one that understands that as we have come before God in our repentance and our confession, that we have been refreshed. We have been, in a sense, given this oxygen that we so importantly need and to do so in a way. We also then have a God that brings about the wonder. It's a vibrant God. It's a God that's alive. It's the resurrected Lord Jesus, even as he gave himself on the cross in our place, offers us this life-giving oxygen of forgiveness of sins. Then we find that the presence of Jesus can bring out the confidence and the hope, breathing life once again into all who need it, giving those who need another chance another chance, the power of the forgiveness of the gospel, renewing hearts and lives and spirits and families and communities, and I would say even our whole nation. Let us keep in mind, and by God's help, that when God's people 
live as God's people, others will notice and will be drawn to Jesus, ask for Jesus, want Jesus, and ultimately be refreshed by Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people that peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God.